Katrina babies, take one. We woke up and my mama was all over the place. Like, yo, we leaving. Like, yo, like, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. I wanted to talk to you about New Orleans, your hometown. How has this city and its film industry influenced you to become or inspired you to become a filmmaker and an artist? Growing up in New Orleans and, you know, kind of being like a, a, a product of my environment, a product of my community, I feel fortunate to be born in like a place that's just so culturally driven and culturally, you know, progressive and culturally rich. I think that it, um, you know, exists in my work today. It drives my work today. In many cases, you know, filmmakers, you know, kind of have to go and seek that inspiration sometimes and they have to go and, you know, study for that inspiration. And, you know, I think that to grow up in like a place like this where this stuff is just outside of my door, it's really impacted me as not just a filmmaker, but an artist. And outside of the art, I think that most of the people here and most of the uh, traditions and the uh, ways that we do things, such as gathering, has like, you know, really shown up in many different parts of my life that I never even expected it to, specifically my career. So uh, there's so many ways, I, I can't even name all of the ways that New Orleans has impacted me as a person, as a creative artist. It shows up in my life every day. And at what point did you have the idea to make a documentary about the children that survived Katrina? Was that sort of like gestating inside of you since you were a kid and since 2005 when it happened? Or was there a point where you said, okay, I need to do this. This needs to be my my documentary right now. Yeah, well, I always say that, um, you know, growing up in New Orleans, well, growing up in a post-Katrina New Orleans was pretty much my research and development phase. And I didn't even really realize it at the time. You know, I think that growing up, in like a city after something like Hurricane Katrina happens where things are not where they need to be in terms of children. And when, you know, just growing up in like a dangerous climate uh, at the time, that was preparing me for the story that I would later go on to tell. Much of what you see in Katrina Babies and much of my process of working on that film dealt with me having to go back to growing up in New Orleans and, you know, pulling, pulling from there. It's interesting, the question that is posed in it. And of course, it won multiple awards at film festivals and it's on HBO. Max and HBO, you can watch it. But the question that was posed that really got to me, and I think to most of the audience, is that the fact that the kids were never asked how they actually felt. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? We say this in the film, but I think that often in disasters, tragedies, and trauma, kids are a afterthought. I think that specifically when it comes to like disasters, the adults, the people in politics, they're so worried about things that matter. Like, like for sure, the material things such as homes and making sure that the house is okay, making sure that we have somewhere to stay once we evacuate, those things matter. So as you can imagine, it can be easy for like a kid to get lost in that, right? You know, because it's like, okay, as long as you, you are safe, we'll worry about the rest of everything later. But many times, uh, I think that when it comes to tragedies and like disasters and trauma, when a child is so young, people make make a bad assumption that they're too young to really understand what's going on. And like they're too young to really fully develop a emotion behind what's going on. You know, by the time they get older, they'll be OK, which is not the case. And I think that a lot of the time, especially when it comes to black youth, they're definitely a after a afterthought. Most of the time later never comes for making sure that they're okay, right? It just kind of becomes like a thing where they are forced to just get over it. But they're not getting over it. They're just suppressing it. We just suppressed it. We thought that we were okay because we had never talked about it and because no one had ever checked on us and made it a big deal. But later in our lives, once we became older, trauma began to surface from an individual level and from a general level. I think that when you look at what's happening in New Orleans right now, that's trauma surfacing from not just Hurricane Katrina, but from years and decades unaddressed trauma. I can't fully answer the question why, but I know that those are just some of the things that, that are at play when it comes to children being ignored when it comes to their trauma. Hurricane Katrina caused one of the biggest disbursements of Black people in history. After losing so much, why wouldn't anyone ask if we were okay? 
Nobody ever asked the children how they were doing. So I am. I always say that Katrina Babies and Hurricane Katrina is not just a New Orleans story. It's a very American story. It's how America has done many of us when it comes to our trauma, when it comes to discrimination, when it comes to resource allocation, poverty. I think that that's a very American story. You know, it may not be Katrina everywhere, but there's something that's in everybody's backyard that is looking for the same justice, right, that we are looking for with Hurricane Katrina. When Hurricane Katrina happened, our social media wasn't what it was today. When Hurricane Katrina happened, these same conversations were happening, you know, like before Black Lives Matter, right? But most of the time it was happening just amongst us, just amongst Black people. Like the idea of Black Lives Matter is not new at all. It's something that we've been fighting for a very long time. I think that now because of social media and because, you know, we have the opportunity to use it as a tool and like make things go viral and make things, you know, um, just have like a lot of numbers behind it. I you know, even was saying that, you know, this is the perfect time to go back to something like Hurricane Katrina that didn't have the platforms and like didn't have the access to platforms um, of social media and of like being able to like, you know, just advocate for ourselves on such a level. It's the perfect time to go back, to, you know, to something like, you know, Hurricane Katrina. And it's the perfect resource. This film could be used as a educational tool, as a resourceful asset so that we can pave a positive and progressive way forward and not keep repeating inhumane things and injustice that's occurred to us in the past. So that's my dream. My dream is that this film could be a great resource to all of us so that we don't have to repeat it. The New Orleans Film Society has a bunch of really great, great programs for emerging filmmakers and uh, minority filmmakers. And there's a lot of graduates that come out of it. Like, you know, you yourself, you started in this city. Do you think, do you see a change happening, especially here in the way that people get more chances when they don't come from parents that can afford Yale or Stanford? New Orleans Film Society definitely helped with the trajectory of my career and specifically the trajectory of Katrina Babies. In 2017, I was a fellow of the Emerging uh, Voices program. And, you know, just like the wealth of information and networking and relationships that I was able to receive from that fellowship and program really changed everything. You know, as you said, I wasn't able to go to a super, 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 super prestigious film school, right? So I was able to take, you know, those workshops and fellowships and relationships and like really apply it to Katrina Babies. And without the, the uh, Emerging Voices program of the uh, New Orleans Film Society, you know, I don't know if that would have happened in, you know, in the way that it did. You know, us having a film community like this for emerging filmmakers, especially ones who don't come from traditional film backgrounds, is super important. And I often see uh, New Orleans Film Society taking more steps forward to making sure that they can, you know, include more people just like myself, because, you know, I am like one of those people that don't come from a traditional film background. And now I'm a success story. I want that to con continue to happen. You know, I know hundreds of young filmmakers who are not, you know, like traditional and, but they're really talented and they have great stories. And I always recommend them to become a member of the uh, New Orleans Film Society just because I know how much information and, you know, how much that changed my whole career. So I'm very proud that we have something like that in New Orleans for sure. What is next for you? What are you working on? What are your, what is your dream project that you want to do? My dream project is to really get this script off the ground and like show what I'm able to do, you know, in that space. So obviously continue continuing to, you know, raise awareness about unheard stories and voices and people and, you know, communities. And I just want to continue to do that, you know, but I also want to show my range, you know, and like, you know, tap into some other worlds as well. I've also been working a lot in the uh, commercial space, working on, you know, commercials and branded content and music videos. It's been an interesting year. You know, I've been getting like a lot of a wide range of different projects, but sooner uh, than later, I'm going to be uh, really uh, focusing on my next feature, which is more than likely going to be a documentary. And then following that, I'm probably going to, you know, start working on getting my script off the ground.